Hi, this is my second video and uh, today I want to analyze the song Blank Space by Taylor Swift uh, in terms of music theory and the harmonic content. The idea behind this uh, video series is to bring the rather dry topic of music theory to the real world and uh, help you understand why songs like Blank Space work and sound like they do. So let's get started. When you look at the entire song, it a, has a pretty familiar structure. It's the standard pop song form. Um, everything has multiple of eight bars. Um, and we have the standard verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus again structure. Pretty straightforward. No experiments here. And um, Taylor Swift is doing this to, um, to kind of make fun of the media, kind of make fun of the genre of that pop music. Um, because the whole track is meant ironically. The song is in the key of F major and it stays there all the time. Uh, no, no uncommon chords, it's, everything is diatonic. No surprises again. So uh, let's get straight to the verse. So the verse begins after a very short intro, just two bars intro with a very simple melody outlining an F major chord. So that, that's the intro, couldn't be any simpler. Again, meant very ironically. So we start with a, with a F major chord here, which is the tonic in the key of F major. Move down the, the pop song form, one third down to the D minor then to the B major and then to the dominant C. This uh, progression works um, because it starts on the tonic, what is expected. Then it moves down a rather weak movement because not, not much changes from the F major to the D minor. It's just the minor parallel chord that has, basically has the same uh, function in the, in the harmonic progression. Then we move to the subdominant, just down another third, to the dominant, and back to the tonic. So these last chords from the subdominant, dominant, and tonic are the, the classic cadence that you know. This is very, very strong, concluding what people expect. So if you if you want that, if you want a strong pull to the tonic, and if you want give people what they expect, use a strong cadence like that, 4-5-1. In fact, throughout the verse, this uh, little melody from the, uh, from the intro continues, remember that, which is basically an F major chord outline. And also Taylor Swift sings the melody pretty much on the, um, on the F uh, pentatonic. So you, you have kind of an F major chord ringing throughout the whole verse. So that basically that F, ma F major chord stays over the moving bass notes, which has the, the same effect as a pedal point. Usually in a pedal point um, is where the bass note stays the same and the chords change, which creates suspense and holds, holds it back a little bit so it can get moving once the bass moves. But in this instance, um, it's the chords, the, the, the F major chord that stays the same throughout the entire sequence. You also uh, feel that, that holding back, creating a little tension, holding back. We are desperately waiting for that F major chord to move somewhere else, which it does in the chorus. So if you want to create some, some tension, 
mainly in the verse, if you want to create some suspense, you can use a pedal point or a device like that where um, one note, a chord or a bass tone stays the same and the rest of the harmonies change. So this simple use of the one, six, four, five pop progression uh, is, as I said, meant ironically um, by, by the authors of this song. So also don't be afraid to use irony in your song. Do that. It's, it's a great tool. And if you can make fun of yourself, uh, people will love you even more. After these changes repeat twice, we get straight into the chorus. And the chorus begins, as we would expect, with the tonic. And the first four bars are basically the same chords as in the verse. The main difference is that we don't have that pedal point anymore. So the chords are now moving and, and even supported by guitar, if I, if I remember it correctly. We have that same movement, but then the third chord is different. We move to a G minor 7 and then up to the B flat and back to the F. So what's happening there? Um, after we move to the D minor, the G minor 7, you could interpret that as the um, parallel minor chord for the B flat that we know from the verse. Because the verse was that, went like that, and the chorus is... So we go to the parallel minor chord instead. The parallel minor chord fulfills the same function in the harmonic progression as the, um, the subdominant chord. And you can see that even all the chord tones are the same. This is a G minor 7. It's basically a B major triad in that chord. So only the bass is different. We can also interpret that moved from the D minor to the G minor 7 as uh, the, a falling fifth, you know. The cycle of falling fifth is probably the strongest pull that we have in, in harmony and in music theory. If you move down a fifth, the interval of a fifth, that's a very strong forward movement. It's also the movement from a dominant to the tonic, from a very tense chord to the resolution. So here we move from D minor down to G minor 7, which is down a fifth. If you want strong forward movement, use that cycle of fifth. And then the following B major chord is probably the only minor surprise in the, in the whole progression, because after we went down to the G minor 7, the ear would usually expect to, to go down another fifth, in the cycle of fifth to the to the dominant C and then back to the tonic but the song doesn't do that the song moves from the G minor 7 up to the subdominant B flat so this is uh, not coincidentally this happens when Taylor Swift sings the punchline the title of the song so this minor surprise is here, again, a simple tool to create attention, to get you to listen. Ah, something is different. Okay, I will remember these words that she sings now. So if you want to remember people, um, the, the title of your song, underpin it with some not so expected harmonies. And then after a short interlude, which is basically the same as the intro. We go back to the verse, do another verse, do another chorus, and then the song goes into the bridge. The bridge lasts eight bars, no surprise, and it has no harmonic content. So the arrangement changes and drops all harmony, all harmonic content. And leaves us just with the, with the beat, the rhythm, and with a melody sung by Taylor Swift. This melody is so simple, couldn't be simpler. It's just the F major scale walk down diatonically. So 
So again, very simple, very almost almost childish melody that she does there. Um, again, again, a, another outstretched middle finger in the in the direction of the press that she's m making fun of. And again, don't be afraid to use these tools to use to be blatantly simple um, to state irony in your song. After another chorus, we then go straight into the ending, which is a very abrupt ending. So we're here. And then we expect the tonic, but it doesn't come. The tonic is just left out to, uh, to keep you hanging there, to keep you wanting more. Again, this is another standard pop song trick and psychologic trick. I, I had that in the, in the other video about um, Hotline Bling, where they do that as well. Many pop songs do that. Just leave your listener hanging there. Don't, don't resolve the progression at the end. Just leave it there and they will want to come back for more. They will want to listen to the song again because it's so open. and stop. These endings are so common, they're a little bit like the Roger Rabbit shave and a haircut trick, where, where you know you, you do that and no to nobody can resist to, to complete that phrase too. So if you leave it hanging there, you, you, you got people on the hook. In conclusion, this song, Blank Space by Taylor Swift, taught us some, some nice devices that we can use in our songs. Whether we want to do simple pop songs or whether we want to explicitly avoid the rules of simple pop songs to stand out from them, um, we can all learn something from these devices. First thing was the use of the paddle point or some other static element to hold back the energy and to build suspense, oftentimes in the verse. So if you want to create that effect, use a pedal point or use some other element that stays the same. Open strings on a guitar, a, a synth chord that stays the same. This song also taught us a lot about irony. So irony is, a, is something that you can not only use in words, in writing, but you can also use in music. If you state Simple things like simple childlike melodies and simple chord changes that everyone knows. You, you can really hear the irony. In the chorus of the song, we saw that a parallel minor chord can substitute for its relative major chord, can take the same function. We saw the cycle of fifth at work, which is one of the most driving forces in music theory. So if you want to create a forward motion, if you want, want to get it moving, use the cycle of fifth. Also use some element that stands out from the rest of the song to, to make people remember that part of the song, to make them listen. Like we have that one chord right when Taylor Swift sings the, the title of the song, Blank Space, where we had a rather unexpected chord. So people started to listen, people remember that moment. And lastly, the very common pop song device of ending a song abruptly. <laughs> and uh, not resolving a harmonic progression in the end. Leave the listener hanging and uh, leave, leave them wanting, wanting more, wanting to come back to the song. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you could take away some insights for your own songwriting, how you could use irony in your songs. I also wrote an article with the content of this video and I will link that in the video description below. Finally, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I will be posting more of this kind of videos in the future.